This is Apollo Saturn launch control, T minus 55 minutes and counting, and the countdown continues to go well. Cape Kennedy, April 11th, 1970. Launch control. In just a little under an hour, the job of launch control for Apollo 13 will be over. Now we'll go to the Manned Spacecraft Center in Houston, Texas for a status. So this is Mission Control Houston. At the present time, the flight controllers here in Mission Control are monitoring the countdown and the status of the crew, the launch vehicle, and the spacecraft. They Half a continent away, the flight controllers prepare for the most critical phase of their job. When Apollo 13 clears the tower, they take over. They are the hub of a worldwide communications and command network upon which the entire mission revolves. In just a little over two days, the men and facilities will be tested as never before. Uh, this is Mission Control Houston at uh, T minus 53 minutes and 20 seconds. This room, the Mission Operations Control Room, is the most familiar site of the Mission Control Center. But this is just one part of the overall complex. Beyond this are staff support rooms, weather and recovery rooms, voice communications, communications command and telemetry, display control, and the real-time computer complex. The Mission Control Center has two-way information flow around the world to tracking stations, recovery forces, contractor facilities, other NASA and government installations, or wherever else is needed. And of course, to the spacecraft. The link between mission control and the spacecraft operates like this. The spacecraft is in Earth orbit, or in lunar orbit, or in space between the Earth and the Moon. It communicates with Earth through one of the tracking stations of the manned spaceflight network. These tracking stations are located at strategic spots around the world to keep in constant contact with the spacecraft. Permanent locations may be supplemented with special tracking aircraft and a tracking ship. The stations are tied in with the Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt, Maryland. From Goddard, the data travel to the Mission Control Center in Houston through two separate routes, one backing up the other in case of a breakdown. There are four basic signals handled by this network. First, tracking data provided by radar. Second, telemetry from the spacecraft, giving the status of the crew and spacecraft systems. Third, voice communications in a two-way flow between the spacecraft and mission control. The signals from the spacecraft flow from the tracking station through Goddard to Houston. From Houston, Voice communications are maintained, not only with the spacecraft, but with remote stations, aircraft, communication ship, recovery forces, and contractor facilities. The fourth type of signals are command data, going from mission control to the spacecraft. These data update the onboard computer with such information as spacecraft attitude, burn duration, and mission sequences. Telemetry and tracking data enter mission control through the communications, command, and telemetry system. These data are then sent to the real-time computer complex. From there, it goes to the display control system, and then to man in the staff support rooms, weather, recovery, and the mission operations control room. Commands are sent from the mission operations control room through the communications, command, and telemetry system through Goddard and the tracking network to the spacecraft. Voice communications are routed through the voice communications system for distribution and mission control around the world, in space, or on the moon. Consoles in the mission operations control room, staff support rooms, real-time computer complex, and other key locations have panels enabling the operator to select from the many communication loops available. Storage batteries can provide emergency power should an outside power failure occur. What, uh, All voice communications are recorded for later analysis. Good point. Is it? 
Telemetry signals monitoring the spacecraft systems and experiments are received through the Communications Command and Telemetry System, referred to in NASA shorthand as CCATS. The heart of CCATS consists of three UNIVAC 494 computers, two of which are active during missions. Telemetry data is received, processed, and distributed on a real-time basis. Digital commands being sent to the spacecraft or experiments go through CCATS where they are formatted and validated. These commands are then sent to Goddard where they are again validated and routed to a tracking station to be uplinked to the spacecraft's onboard computer. When the command is received, the verification is then telemetered back to Earth, to Goddard, through the dual paths to CCATS. The time lag from command initiation to the time it leaves Earth is about one half second. The command will reach the spacecraft in from one to three seconds, depending on its distance from Earth. The return telemetry signal follows the same route in reverse. The bulk of the data are routed through CCATS to the real-time computer complex, called the RTCC. They initially go to the system selector unit, which can be described as a super switchboard, to send the data to the computers selected for mission support. There are five IBM 36075 computers in the RTCC. During an Apollo mission, two are used to support the flight. The remaining computers are used to support the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments Package, an automated lunar science laboratory, and for simulations or other future missions-related activities. They can be called into service as replacements should one of the mission support computers fail. The computer complex is supervised by men in the RTCC control room. The two mission computers are both fed the same mission data, but only one is connected to the main display system. The other is a dynamic standby, which can take over immediately should the main computer fail. This switchover has been designed so that a man makes the decision to switch. However, the computer monitors itself to detect internal central processing unit failures or peripheral equipment malfunctions and notifies the operator. While the output of the RTCC is used in several areas, it is primarily sent to the display control system. This area of the mission control center consists of a number of facets. First, the television slide display. This consists of 635 millimeter slides displaying various backgrounds. These slides are contained in a cabinet and can be shown over any one of 40 television channels. Images generated directly by the RTCC computer can be mixed with the slide background by the television system. Any display can be called up by flight controllers or others using the digital television system. Should a copy of any display at any given time be desired, a hard copy can be made. This is then sent to the proper location through a pneumatic tube system. Displays of general interest to the flight controllers can be projected on large screens in the front of the mission operations control room. Rear screen projectors are used, including color and black and white television projectors, slide projectors, and scribing projector plotters controlled by the mission operations computer. The staff support rooms, abbreviated SSRs, are the next link in mission control. Located next to the mission operations control room, there are six staff support rooms, including flight dynamics, vehicle systems, life systems, Flight Director SSR, Experiments Office, Project Office SSR, and on the first floor, the Instrumentation Support Team. The general function of all staff support rooms is to receive and analyze data, predict trends, and compare them with baseline data. They send the information with recommendations in condensed form 
to the flight controllers in the mission operations control room called MOKER. The Project Office SSR provides detailed flight subsystems analysis where actions to correct malfunctions are called for. The Flight Director's SSR keeps detailed track of stowage lists, spacecraft configurations, and provides procedure support to MOKER. In the life support area, records of medication the crew has taken are kept. Trends in the physiological condition of the crew are analyzed and medical data requirements formulated. In vehicle systems, the booster is monitored during launch and all spacecraft systems are watched during the mission, including the command and service modules, lunar module, and EMU, the suits and backpacks which keep the crew alive on the moon. The Experiments Office, SSR, provides scientific data analysis for operational flight experiments. During lunar surface operations, the ALSEP room monitors the deployment and functioning of the Apollo Lunar Surface Experiments Package. This room also operates between missions to observe and control the operation of this automated lunar scientific observatory. The Flight Dynamics Staff Support Room monitors all phases of the flight trajectory and powered maneuvers, such as Earth orbit insertion, translunar insertion, mid-course corrections, and lunar orbit landing and ascent trajectories. The instrumentation support team monitors and controls the flow of all mission data through the Mission Control Center and the Manned Spaceflight Network. All information funnels into flight controllers in the Mission Operations Control Room, MOKER. The men at these consoles must be prepared to make mission critical decisions. The Booster Systems Engineer, call sign Booster, is responsible for analysis and evaluation of the status and performance of the launch vehicle and its systems. He reports any major malfunction that could affect the mission. The Return to Earth Officer, call sign Retro, observes every phase of the mission from launch through the return, watching for contingencies. His job, in addition to the nominal end of mission planning, is to always have available the fastest and best way to get the crew back in case of an abort. The flight dynamics officer, call sign FIDO, makes sure the spacecraft is on the right trajectory, and if it is not, determines the propulsive maneuver necessary to get it there. The guidance officer, guidance, keeps track of the computers on the command and lunar modules to make sure they are functioning properly. His job is especially critical for burns controlled primarily by those computers. The life systems officer, or surgeon, keeps track of the medical and physiological condition of the flight crew. The spacecraft communicator, or CAPCOM, is usually an astronaut, a member of the backup or support crew. He is the only man who talks directly with the mission crew. He receives direction from the flight director on information to be sent to the crew. The command service module electrical and environmental engineer, call sign ECOM, monitors the consumables aboard the spacecraft, projects usage rates, and how long the systems will last. The command service module guidance and control engineer, GNC, keeps track of the status of the propulsion systems and guidance systems components other than the onboard computers. The lunar module electrical and environmental engineer, call sign TELMU, serves a similar function to ECOM on the command service module, monitoring the consumables of the lunar module, including the EMU, the suit and backpack that keep the astronauts alive while exploring the moon. Likewise, the lunar module control engineer complements the command service module GNC engineer monitoring propulsion systems and non-computer sections of the guidance system of the lunar module. <laughs>